we're going to chat about building some inspiration. Maybe we can touch a little bit on the code the side of things, some challenges that we're having and some innovations that we'd like to bring into the catenary curvilinear vaulted dome geometry. So we're not just going to speak about domes. It's going to be anything that's not square, although I'm sitting in front of a Russian oven. And thankfully, it's the coldest thing in the house. In, in summertime, it acts as an air conditioning because it's like 5,000 bricks and this thing is just stable in temperature. So, Hajar, how are things on your side? Yeah, things are good. You know, life in Hawaii is just, you know, so nice. Um, Gabe is here and we're just finishing up some domes that we started in January. Mm -hmm. Taking a break from doing workshops. There's a, a couple from Denmark who are here with us. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're having a really, life is good. You know, I, I let them come because of who they were and the skills they had. And, and they also want to stay for three months. And I said, we all get along really well. So, oh, that's nice. That, that, that's a thing with volunteers, especially if you're having them. That's one of the challenges that, like, you know, getting people onto your land, you know, it's obviously there's no people around here except us. And, you know, we, we, we're in this abandoned village in Russia. Um, so it would be, you know, a, a daily interaction. So uh, you obviously had a few Skype sessions with them or Zoom sessions before you got them here, correct? Yes. Yeah. For a couple months, I dialogued with them before they actually came and they sent me pictures of projects. They were, they were doing a tour around the world. They spent time in Mexico, uh, mm -hmm. Costa Rica. They're really dedicated to their you know, what they're pursuing. So I really felt that they were a really great choice. Yeah. From my side, I've started the bounding tires. So I'm developing this um, home for cold climate. Although I'm boiling the last two months, really hot here, really, really hot here. Nothing like Canada, where they're having plus 54 Celsius in British You're Columbia. The whole, the whole the world is doing that in the Northern Hemisphere right now. That's what I'm building here is a temple where I can host ceremony. Domes are beautiful spaces for that. Are you using some special geometrical proportions to get some form of resonance inside? Yeah, I don't really study that too much, but um, I have friends who are sound healers and they came into the temple dome and with a, with a tuner and measured the frequency that it resonated at. It was actually a perfect 440A note. That wow. It resonated with, it's kind of amazing. Uh, the bottom dome is the biggest one, but. Uh, yeah. Well, on my side, I'm building this uh, a home for cold climate, which is basically. Yeah, um, that looks amazing. Yeah, I've taken the knowledge uh, from your workshop and Cal Earth, the uh, sandbags and uh, Mike Reynolds, and I kind of mix it with sacred geometry. So it's on, based on that basic of Isis where the two circles intersect, yeah? And I've just combined it with, you know, uh, the, the, the Earth tubes. The Earth tubes and the geothermal. So geothermal, I'm planning to tap into the uh, warmed up air by the Earth to yeah. bring in in winter because the fresh air in winter is, um, is very, very needed because when you start even firing things up, it just eats up all the oxygen and you, you choke. And if you right. open in your windows, it's insanely cold, like insane. It was minus 12 Fahrenheit. Really cold. So you're yeah. pretty far north in Russia then. Not really, as strange as it sounds, no. It's plus 60 degrees north. It's just. I think the border between the U.S. and Canada is about forty-five, so you're you're north of that. So pounding tires, but Hajar, oh my God, this the tires are so hard. You know, I mean, oh. acrylic is so easy to make. Um, and then the super adobe, you, if you got the machine to mix it up, then you put it in a bag, so just walking and stomping it with a stomper. Uh, I just made my own stomper with the pot plant, so. That worked well, almost for free. But tires, man, I've got the sledgehammer and you have to go hard, really, really hard because you're turning these tires into rocks. You're actually making your own stones. 
I say you're keeping yourself in good shape anyway. Yeah, I'm starting to lose weight. So that's a really good bonus. But I mean, it's so hot outside and I, I can only do three tires a day. I get up at five o'clock in the morning, I go do a tire and I'm finished. Then I go like when it's about 11 or so, I have to do one more tire. And then, uh, and then in the evening, I do one more tire. I can't do more than three tires per day. And that's why I'm so glad that this design that I've, uh, you know, I'm, I'm show, I'll show on the screen, it's of a tiny house. So, you know, tiny house means less tires and less uh, everything. Because when you're yeah. building it yourself, uh, you know, it's a whole another story. Like even this house you're sitting in, if you build it yourself, it's just, uh, you know, one thing to use wood, wait, I mean, uh, we're in this wooden log and house, so we're renting this house. It's massive wood, so you're basically taking these trees that you drop a uh, hundred trees and then you or two hundred trees and you build yourself a log and home. So using the life force of the tree as a building material, which is obviously a no go for, you know, especially the later situation of what's happening with deforestation. You know, some really want to stay away from right. timber. But with acreage, you're making your own material. With super adobe, you're making your own material with earth and uh, and, and cement. And with tires, you're making it with waste and just earth, you're just pounding earth in it. But it's a lot of work and it's, uh, um, I think, unrealistic. If one builds a, a, a typical Earthship um, global model with 780 tires, it's, it's a mess. You can't. It's, it, it's a lovely dream, but it, it's a... Well, I know, and they all told us that, you know, and they worked for the Earthship Academy. And they said that even though they work for the Earthship Academy, they can't afford their own Earthship. You know, they, they you know, cost too much and it's yeah. too, uh, you know, and it's so much work. So none of them have their own Earthships. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Which, yeah, so I'm kind of working on that. So I'm, so I'm, adding an a, I'm adding an acrete elements to speed up like the roof construction. Are you aware of um, Stavina tiles? Gustavino. Okay. Gustavino. Yeah. From Barcelona. He brought this technology many years, uh, over a century ago. And they put three yeah. thin tiles. And man, they built a whole train station on top of this a dome. Very shallow domes. Very shallow. And it's vaults. Right? I know. It just blows my mind. And it seems like to do that with uh, fiber reinforced cement would make be so easy. You know, using an air form to create the shape and a fabric reinforced cement would be really, well, actually, I'm going to build one here really soon. That's our, as soon as we get these domes done, we're going to build a little model, 14 foot diameter. Uh -huh. with, with fiber reinforced cement bricks, acrete. Not with bricks. No, it's just going to be fiber cement. And then we're going to bury it in, um, we're going to bury it with lava rock and we're going to use dirt as the mortar and put plant, you know, put seeds in the dirt. So the whole thing will just, you know, be a living building. I'm not sure what we're going to plant in it yet. I got to talk. But you're not going to put acreage inside. It's just going to be fiber, cement, and what? Sand. Yeah. Sand and cement and fiber. I've, I've been researching some, um, blown up shapes and um with my knowledge of fabric i used to work with fabrics before um i, oh, yeah. I, I want i want to make some interesting globular shapes as well and and, and bury them as well um so the front would yeah. be like a spread out put a geodesic dome here so make like an earthship that can be made with a geodesic and the shape the rest is a globular shape that's buried um but where i'm yeah. going now with the ability of um augmented reality glasses yeah you know those are the ones yeah. that facebook just released and um, others are coming out I've never used them. i haven't used those either but there are programs now coming out where you can see the shape of the building real size and you can put yeah. the bricks if you have a fast drying mortar you can put the bricks because, you know, one always needs a form in order to make the right shape or the, you know, so you have to make this fancy either blown up shape or a wooden shape or something that you can make this beautiful arches and domes that they, 
you know, obviously right. with, with acrete, you, you make an arm or a compass that gives you the, the shape. But when you start working with really uh, weird shapes that are not just domes or bolts, a combination of, you know, and I'll, I'll share on the yeah. screen, right, um, you know, some of these things that I've been researching, then um, you can't use an compass arm. You need either a wooden pre-made laser cut thing that you can, or a guided rebar or something, but it gets very tricky. So I want to develop- Yeah, you could do it with an air form. Yeah. But imagine if we don't use a form. Imagine if we can see the entire shape as it is, and we actually have these bricks that, uh, that we, 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 with a fast drying mortar that we can put them in the right place because you can see exactly where the brick can go because you've got these glasses, the augmented reality glasses. That's where, what I want to experiment. That's awesome. I mean, because that's what the guys do in Mexico, right? They, they build those Boveda ceilings without any guidance. They'll take a square wall building, put a dome over it all by eye. Yeah. And now, but that's like many, have, many years of experience. Yeah, they've been doing it so long. It's like they have those virtual reality glasses on without really having them. It's in their their intuitive mind knows where to put it. Now them. imagine we can bring it to our students that people can oh. never build with bricks, can see the whole thing real side, and they just trim the bricks. Sure, you still need to smack the brick and, 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 and uh, yeah. when you come to the corners and so on, but it's a fast drying mortar that Gustavino yes. tiles used, the research Gustavino, and uh, because just stick it and it stays. That's it. Yes. Oh, and they had interlocking bricks, mind you. Their bricks had a little lip that this brick would lock into this brick so they wouldn't slide off. So that's just some of the things that I want to play with. Um, I love that idea of the, using the augmented reality. But it yeah. still seems like it'd be so much easier just to have a whole membrane that you just spray cement on and you're done. I know. Again, Hajar, if you're speaking with just dome, uh, working out a... a um, a form where it's a few like like orange slices and you stitch it together that's awesome but if we're starting to talk weird shapes but weird shapes i mean think about the bouncy houses you've seen bouncy houses right yeah. that they make for yeah, yeah, yeah. kids playgrounds they make all kinds of weird any kind of shape you can imagine i know you know, Jared, i used to work out these these shapes it takes a lot of mathematics because i used to work with spandex the the swimming costume material that stretches and I yeah. made really liquid flowy shape that was stretched in space. And there's some serious mathematics you had to calculate because, you know, because the fabric comes in five feet wide, correct? And yeah. you only have that. So, and you need to make a shape that's really uh, interesting. Uh, then, you know, I'm just saying the calculations there are not for everybody. That's, but I that's think a, they have computer programs now. I mean, even SketchUp has a, a plugin called Unwrap and Flatten, where you can create complex shapes and then it'll just show you the cutting pattern. You have to still, you know, kind of design it in flat segments, but the air form will then fill it out into a more complex curve. But yeah, yeah that's. Yeah. Yeah, that's. So that, but making something that uh, people anywhere in the world can put the glasses and see the shape, I think. So they build their walls. Yeah, really. yeah, they build their walls using tires, sandbags, whatever method. And they create the, yeah. The, the I love the, that. that. That is brilliant. I've never heard of anyone mention that idea before. I think it's. I've seen your beautiful dome, not even the dome, I've seen your beautiful home that you guys built in. Costa Rica, I believe it is, a beautiful white with a vault on the side and a few domes together. Oh, yeah. It was a really nice project. Uh, I'd love to share, if, with your permission, some pictures of this on, on, the, on this video. Yeah. You know, it was Rafa working with the owner, and that's, you know, they developed the design. Yeah, it turned out really nice. And are there any interesting projects like that that you're working on? Or you're just doing the stuff on your land right well, now? Well, you know, we've had so many students now over the years, and we just got engineering approval too. So there's, yeah, we got a, a major engineering firm uh, 
called us up because a couple of our students approached them to do projects and um, they wanted to, you know, permit the structures. And so in America, in America, their, their main office is in Oregon, but they're licensed in every state and in Canada. They do every kind of engineering. So what does one need to do if they build them, if they want to have an approved aircrete dome um, or, or, or vault in, in USA or Canada? It starts with us submitting a professional drawing, correct? Yeah, you need, a, you need construction drawings that you send to the engineering firm. The engineering firm looks at them and puts their stamp on it. If they have a really a, a professional enough drawing, that's a really good step towards uh, having an approval. So you can either have an architect draw you up a drawing, which is going to cost a lot of money, or a student can learn how to draw themselves in SketchUp or another... 3D software, yep. add some details, uh, section details, top plan views, you know, all of those foundation floor plan and so on. And then submit these drawings themselves, which is not that hard, especially for dome structures. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. What we're planning to do is develop a, a whole diverse collection of designs that are already approved and with, you know, kind of like we did with Steve's, um, mm -hmm. but, a little bit more professional and mm -hmm. um and so that you know at least we'll have you know like say a one bedroom two bedroom three bedroom house and a maybe community center a temple a restaurant or whatever different things that people will be able to work with because you're right That's if you fantastic. have to go to a, if you go, have to go to a professional architect then it, it's going to cost but you know that's what it takes if you're going to get it permitted but no, if we but can I offer think, something that people can exactly. use, then it doesn't have to cost them very much. Exactly. Well, having having yeah. an engineer or an architect that doesn't usually work in curvilinear domes, for them it's a mind wreck, okay? Complete mind wreck. And they charge you sometimes a lot more for drawing up, for example, a design that Rafa did in Costa Rica, an architect would charge you a lot of money to draw that up, almost sometimes as much money as it would cost to build the whole thing, you know? <laughs> but that's true, that's true. Our architect, professional architect that, uh, that, you know, so where I'm going with this, so from your side, you will be providing uh, ready-made plans for various structures, such as different size yeah. homes, um, restaurant temple, which is great because a lot of the people will, will, will cover most of their needs there. From my side, I'm planning another workshop where I'll just focus on drawing uh, um, plans uh, where we design on paper, obviously start with paper, we'll, we'll start yeah. with brainstorming for the, for the right climate because for me, sticking in a cold climate earthship, uh, Watilarium in Hawaii will cook there you yeah. know so everybody's in different climates so i, I want to run another um, online course where we're actually going to focus on designing for a specific climate with paper and then taking it into 3d software and then extracting the plans the section views the top view the floor plans for submitting to the engineer and that's what i would like to you know share on this um, with your students as well, because I think that will be something important. Ask a last question. Are there any uh, sure. strategies for cooling, for cooling the domes? Here, you know, because it is a hot climate here, we just make them tall and vent out the top and have a lot of, have them very open, you know, a lot of big openings and a vent in the top and a tall ceiling and they stay really nice and cool. Well, you, it definitely feels cool. It's kind of like being under a shade tree, you know, because uh -huh. there's the radiant heat isn't, isn't contained in it. It just, you know, it's always just going up. And okay. Okay. with all the openings, it just stays nice and cool. And the aircrete is, you know, a pretty good insulation too against the radiant yeah. heat. Thanks, Ajar. Thanks for connecting. I really appreciate it. Yeah, likewise. Uh, I wish know. you all the best. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> Be well. Bye.